May I come in, sir? May I come in, sir? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank oh, you, sir. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. Is it Ramana Reddy or Ramana Kant Reddy? Sir, it is Ramana Kant Reddy, sir. Ah, your Gmail is speaking, but your uh, DAF2 is not speaking like that. It is the same, I guess. Ramana Kant Reddy, sir. So that is my father's name, sir. Ramana oh, Reddy. father's Ramana. name is Ramana Reddy? Yes, sir. Oh, that's interesting. Achha, okay. Right, right, right. Sorry. Mistake okay. is ours. Yeah. Fine, good. We were very curious to know about this rural development and technology. Okay, sir. What exactly this is all about? So, what have you learnt in this particular? And that uh, too from IIT Delhi. So, I want to hear more about that. Sir, my basic graduation was from mechanical engineering. Yeah, I've sir. seen that. I took rural development and technology uh, as an elective. <laughs> so, I did some of the courses from that particular department, sir, because I was more interested in understanding various opportunities. Uh, which ca we can explore in developing the rural side of the country, sir. So, I have done some courses in uh, bio-methane production. How to... Bio-methane production. Bio-methane. Bio-methane, bio-gas. Hmm. Bio-gas was the major thing, but hmm. uh, bio-methane was also a part of it. So, production of this hmm. uh, in rural areas and how to use that as a resource hmm. is one of the major theme which I have uh, worked with. Just correct me if I'm wrong. I have to understand this. Biogas is also methane, isn't it? Yes, sir. Biogas is methane. Methane. And when you say biomethane, is it a different thing or it is? Uh, no, sir. I, I think I have made a mistake. I, I, I was I was mentioning about biogas only. Biogas. Only. Got confused. Okay, okay. So I mean, anyway, I got the clarity. Yes, Thank you. Sir. Fine. So there, uh, have you done something in terms of? Uh, uh, in terms of innovation to the currently available technology because biogas is something which has been there for yes. years back. more than 30 years I've been hearing about yeah. so what is that additional thing that you have done there uh, the course mainly focused on learning the present uh, state of development in the biogas okay. for example it was more of a practical oriented course so we were given more many case studies of uh, success and failures of various biogas plants and projects which were taken up in India mm. in different uh, parts of the country, sir. Mm. Like some of the successful uh, examples which were uh, uh, taken in Rajasthan mm. and what was the reason for their success and how one can implement uh, these uh, projects and what were the reasons for failures, if any, uh, in different areas of the country, sir. Mm. It was more of a practical oriented course. Very good. So, Rajasthan model, which is successful model. Yes, sir. Uh, so, why has it become successful and why the other models are not successful? What exactly was technically different? Uh, technically, uh, there was not much difference with uh, different uh, projects which were undertaken, sir. Mm. Main difference was the level of awareness of the people and their uh, in enthusiastic participation in the project on a longer term basis, sir. Because in many projects across the country where this was taken up, the people were given proper awareness at the start, but over a period of time, they faced many practical difficulties and uh, slowly their interest got decreased. And that's why because of poor uh, people participation over a period of time, uh, the model didn't get succeeded well, sir. But so in Rajasthan... it's a managerial challenge more than a technical challenge. More, it was more of a... The, wherever the failure happened, it was more of a managerial challenge. The technical aspects were also there. Uh, but at this point of time, I am exactly unaware of, uh, unable to recall those technical it's okay, aspects. It's fine. It's fine. Now, other than uh, this biogas, are there any other technologies that you had examined? Uh, we were also exposed to some of the other initiatives taken up by the Rural Development Department of my college, sir. So, in, in that particular course. Hmm. Uh, for example, there were some projects of uh, improved uh, chulas hmm. in the rural areas of Uttarakhand. Uh, where the chula, improved chulas had uh, more efficiency mm. and less uh, environmental pollution and less harmful to the humans. Mm. So, certain practical projects were hap being happening. So, we were just exposed to various uh, present ongoing technologies at that point of time. Sir. Okay. So, improved cholas. Yes, sir. See, again, like biogas, I have uh, 
been observing these improved cholas uh, in the northeast where I worked and uh, also in probably some, some other parts of the country also. But again, that also remained where it was, yes, sir. isn't it? For several decades. Yes, sir. Well, people have been talking about improved cholas, improved cholas and all that. I yes, mean, the, whatever you have improved, you have not improved any further than that. Yes, sir. I think it remained more or less like that only. Yes, sir. So, so what seems to be the challenge there? Sir, there are two, three different challenges for this specific problem, sir, which I can recall. Uh, one point is, government is actively promoting LPG, in, even in rural areas. Yeah. So with time, the aspect of this improved chulas got declined because of improved and uh, accessibility to LPG cylinders. That was one reason, sir. Second reason is uh, the people participation also was not uh, very high because improved chulas, at, at least in the initial stages, required a little bit of contribution of human labor from their side. Uh, it was in the aspect of either making or delivery. At least uh, in my college, there were some prototypes which were given for free in, as a pilot project. But over a period of time, they asked for the uh, local participation in making the chulas, where the participation was, uh, the turnaround was very low because people felt it easy to use normal chula as such. They were not much concerned in certain areas about the negative aspects or the positive aspects provided by the improved chula and the negative aspects by the normal chula. So the turnout was low, so over a period of time, uh, it wasn't able to uh, take up a mass scale as such. So one was the increased LPG uh, supply, cylinder supply, and the second was low uh, people participation, sir. So and effectively, so therefore, if we enhance the availability of LPG, yes, sir. the very argument of this improved chula will just disappear. Exactly, sir. And that probably is far more sensible. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Yes, sir. We have enough reserves of uh, natural gas. It is, at least at this point of time, it is better to go for LPG instead of chula, sir. Mm -hmm. Because on any given day, Im even the improved chulas, uh, still there is still a consumption, be of, uh, consumption of this and pollution. Wood and all yes, sir. Fossil. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, therefore, now again we are back to square one after spending so yes, many sir. years on this. Yes, sir. But there are also some other emerging technologies like biochar mm -hmm. and briquette technology. But these are all in the very nascent stage, like the making of these is uh, very costly and uh, bringing it on a mass scale is not <coughs> so economical at this point of time. Even uh, briquettes are also charcoal briquettes. Yes, sir. Chicken, it, also it, it also requires the same fossil fuel. Someone has to cut the tree. Yes. Yes, sir. So, that also has not succeeded. It has not succeeded. It has not succeeded. It has not succeeded. Yes, sir. So, more of the, most of these are just like a pilot projects in various uh, universities. Other than rural energy, in that rural technology, did you also look at any other aspects of life? Uh, energy, of course, is yes very sir. important in rural areas. I will not discount that, yes but sir. there are others also. Uh, I also did one more elective course in this uh, under this department, sir, which mostly focused on uh, diversity of culture in rural areas. And is it a threat or is it a uh, opportunity for India and is it a resource for India? was the main aim of that course. Sir. It was more of a social science course in rural So technology. that was a research subject or it was a… No sir, it was more of a uh, social science and pra providing practical experience about the rural way of life, sir. So that course was basically given to us to understand the culture of uh, rural India so that uh, whenever we implement any technological interventions, hmm. one has to be very careful of their own culture. Uh, if the people themselves uh, accept the technology, then only we can see the success in these projects, sir. Mm. So for this, we were given the knowledge of rural uh, India. Okay, sir. the context. Context. Okay, you needed sir. to understand the context. Ex yes, sir. That's a more or less like a social, yes, sociological sir. perspective. Yes, sir. So that you don't deserve things beyond a point. Yes, sir. How is that helpful? Because tomorrow you become an IS officer. Do you think that knowledge and that insight will be of value to you? Yes, sir. I feel it is a, it is a big asset for me uh, because whenever uh, I will, whenever if I am posted in any district, so development of the rural areas of the districts is also of high prime importance, sir. So understanding the culture of the rural uh, area of that particular district, mm -hmm. their historical problems. What are the reasons <coughs> for the present situation mm -hmm. will definitely help me in designing and implementing policies in a better way, sir. 
at least in most of the policies I feel in India are very well designed, but the implement when it comes to implementation part, if one lacks the proper uh, holistic understanding of their culture, uh, the implementation will always be not as uh, success, if it would have been for the culture parts. I agree with you, that, that kind of sensitivity is required, especially when we are inducting tech. Yes, sir. Good. In fact, this is a very valuable uh, course, I should think, because IITs have never been that sensitive. First yes. of all, IIT professors have to undertake this kind of a course. Do they also do this? Uh, sir, the course which I have just mentioned was uh, for the first time, uh, it was floated uh, in my final year of my graduation, sir. And, Is that uh, a popular course? Uh, because it was the first time being floated, it was not so popular when I took, sir. Yeah. Post that, I don't have much idea, sir, because I have graduated from the college right now. Good. And uh, you also went abroad. Yes. What were you doing in Osaka, of all the places? Uh, sir, I... Air conditioning? <laughs> what exactly was happening there? Uh, sir, uh, basically in my third year of uh, graduation, I got an opportunity to work as intern in Daikin Air Conditioner. Mm. So they came to my campus and uh, interviewed some candidates. Mm. So they selected two of the candidates. I was one among them. So I worked as an intern there for two months of time. Mm. Post that, they have uh, they took uh, one interview of me, mm. and I was given an opportunity of uh, working for Daikin on a long term basis. Yes, sir. Permanently. Uh, it was given to me on, in my fourth year of graduation. So I thought of exploring that option because I truly wanted to work uh, in my core field and uh, look whether I am able to achieve what I wanted, am mm -hmm. I getting the satisfaction or not. So I went, I accepted the offer and went to Osaka, Japan, sir. Their headquarters was at Osaka. So I was working as AC development engineer in Daikin, sir. And you left? Sir, uh, after working for a certain brief period of time, I have realized that uh, though I was uh, following what I felt in my final year of graduation, I was not completely satisfied with uh, the satisfaction which I was getting from my job. I was unable to do any uh, thing which impacts the society at a larger level, which I always wanted to do. I thought in one or other way I might be able to do that in the job, which I realized was almost uh, nothing. And moreover, the work culture in Japan and the corporate culture uh, in Japan uh, made me realize that uh, achieving my goals will take a very longer time if I continue in that job. So I decided to leave it at an early stage, even before entering into any proper project as such. Mm, that's quite a risk. Yes, sir. Uh, I, just before I was resigning, they allotted me a project which was for nearly three and a half years. So I took, I felt that it is my moral responsibility to either leave it at an early stage or to finish the project completely. Right. So I decided to leave it at You're right. Stage. And you appeared uh, twice already for this examination. Yes, sir. This is my fourth attempt, sir. Appeared for mains thrice. No, but you have, Asha, you went to mains twice. Yes. Sir. Why has this become an obsession, sir? I won't say that this is an obsession for me. I have been giving it for so long because I really want to enter into this particular job, and uh, that is the main reason or motivation for me to work. It is not like I am completely obsessed with this uh, and there is, I don't think that uh, my life will end if I don't enter into the civil services. But I am really passionate about doing this job, so that's why I have been continually giving, continuously giving this uh, attempt. If I may ask, what exactly is motivating you? What is that one thing which says that you must become an IS officer? Uh, so working for the society and uh, addressing diverse challenges in whatever potential I can. So that is one of my main prime motivation to enter into civil services. I know that various other fields might also provide similar opportunities, but I personally feel that this is one platform which provides such opportunities at a very large and diverse scale, and one platform where I can use my capabilities to fullest of the extent possible. So you are keeping the IAS in mind. Suppose yes. you get a rank uh, which will let you join audit and account service. Do you still think that the kind of dream that you have will be fulfilled in that job? Sir, I will definitely accept the job uh, because I, even uh, Indian Audit and Account Service is highly respectable and uh, it also provides me a lot of opportunities. But uh, because of my personal uh, passions and considerations, I will again give a, another go at this exam till I reach whatever That's service good. I want. Sir.
No, no, perseverance is the hallmark of a civil servant and I'm sure you will have enough of it. My compliments to you for whatever you are. I think you can. Yeah. So, Ramanakant, when talking to sir, you said that, you know, rural culture in India is highly diverse. And you're telling, is it an opportunity or a right. challenge? Challenge. So, what do you think, sir? What do you think, in your opinion? Is it a challenge or opportunity? Uh, sir, personally, I feel high diversity is always like a double-edged sword, sir. Okay. It is up to us whether we use it as an opportunity or as a challenge. Uh, we have seen in many cases uh, throughout the history that whenever diversity is there, uh, it is the crux of human uh, civilization and human race, if I can say so. I feel using it, using that diversity to the fullest of extent will help us in thriving as a society and addressing whatever challenges which uh, we are facing as a civilization, sir. Is India able to do so presently? Are we able to really use this diversity to our advantage? Sir, in most of the cases we have done uh, quite well, sir. At least that's what I feel. Any examples? Uh, sir, for example, uh, different uh, People, uh, like di people from different rural areas have different way of life. So they have different uh, food habits, different cultures, different festivals. So over a period of time, uh, India has been able to preserve it and protect it. Uh, and whenever these indigenous practices have been preserved, the society is still living in uh, relation in sync with the nature, sir. So for example, if I, ta if I can take some examples, recently, last year, uh, uh, woman named Rahim Bai Popair got uh, Padma Shri mm. because of her work in preserving the land races, uh, which is like indigenous varieties of these food crops. This is one of their culture in preserving the food habits and it actually helping a lot in uh, avoiding. Uh, so, I think you are talking here about traditional knowledge, right? Yes, we have to preserve the traditional knowledge. Yes, sir. Okay. But keeping the knowledge aside, any other advantages of having so much diversity in cultures in India? Sir, I feel traditional uh, knowledge is a part of culture, sir. Obviously, if uh, one society, if any society's culture is getting impacted, it means their traditional knowledge will also be on decline over a period of time. So, preserving uh, this traditional, uh, sorry, diverse culture of India is itself an asset for India, sir. For example, we boast ourselves of uh, many different languages. But what is the advantage? What is the advantage? Uh, he is coming to that point. Yeah. Yes, sir. Like, mm -hmm. we boast ourselves of many different languages, many different cultures. I feel uh, if we eliminate these differences or cultures, uh, there is always a threat of complete wiping out of civilization. Okay. So, if any culture gets extinct, it means we, lo we lost a huge uh, resource of uh, civilization. Over a period of time, culture has a lot of solutions to how to live in a particular environment, how to deal with different circumstances. So, for example, a person from South India knows very well of how to adapt to certain climates which are local to him, okay. which are an inherent part of his culture, sir, right. which a North Indian might not know. Okay, okay. And then you were talking about technology. How certain technologies may not be accepted in certain cultures, right? Can you name a technology or two which are really useful to India, but our culture did not accept that because of which the technology could not become really prominent and could not come in handy for development of India? Sir, I have a few com examples coming to my mind at this point of time, sir. Uh, one I can think of is the vaccine of chickenpox. Uh, being a student of anthropology, I remember a case study where when the chickenpox vaccine was being administered in India on a larger scale, many people from tribal and rural areas, they were not in uh, acceptance of this vaccine because they felt that chickenpox uh, is something religious, like having getting the disease is uh, not anything wrong. So they feel that it is antithetical to their religious or beliefs or practices if you take a vaccine. So, despite having vaccine, many people have lost their life because of uh, not uh, properly accepting this, their vaccine. This is one example, sir. Another example which I can uh, think of is from my rural development course which I did. So, there was uh, an innovation where uh, waterless urinals concept was brought in by one of my professor. Uh, what is it? Waterless? Waterless urinals. Okay. So, whenever we go to urinals, we uh, after urinating, we use water to flush it up. So, uh, the innovation was basically focused on uh, not using water so as to conserve it. So, they made uh, a camphor-like uh, chemical compound which if placed in that urinals will help uh, in fighting that odor 
and there will be no need to use water uh, to flush it out. But even when this was provided to various uh, people, not just in rural areas, but even in urban areas, they were not in readily accepting this idea of waterless urinals because they felt that they were unable to imagine uh, proper uh, orderless urinals without any water. So any similar technology is used by Indian railways, waterless urinals? Yes, sir. Uh, in, uh, they are using waterless uh, toilets, sir, bio toilets like uh, they sir, are. Yeah, tell me. Sir, sir they are uh, using. Uh, what is it? bio concoction to decompose the waste uh, in the toilets of uh, railways sir okay so they are not using using water as such to flush yeah. out the uh, do you, technology which technology do you use sir it, it is based upon the decomposition only bio decomposition only okay. and further i am okay. unable okay. to recollect anything. You know, any microbe any microbial action any microbe you know about sir as as far as I can recollect, it is microbes which decompose that, but I am unable to recollect right, any okay, specific okay. name as such. And you are from Kadapa, right? Kadapa. Yes, sir. Kadapa. District. If you are made tourism director, how can you make Kadapa a tourist hub of India? Is there potential, first of all, in Kadapa? Yes, sir. There is a lot of potential in Kadapa to get promoted as a tourism hub. Firstly, its geography is uh, it geography makes it very peculiar. It is uh, half up half of the district is uh, contiguous with the Eastern Ghats region, sir. Rest uh, half of the district is a decently plain area. So there are uh, it is like a bio uh, bio zone where two different ecosystems are meeting. So this uh, makes bio it zone. very peculiar. Yes, sir, two different ecosystems are meeting. Do you call it as bio zone, uh, sir? Uh, as far as I can remember, it is echo tune. I, I am unable much. to recall the exact name, okay. sir. Yeah. Sorry for that. So uh, there are very various wildlife sanctuaries, sir. Lankamala wildlife sanctuary, Sesha Chalam Biosphere Reserve also falls uh, to a certain extent in Kadapa district. And there are famous uh, red sanders. Okay. Uh, now tell me, what would you do to make it a tourist hub? Sir, uh, eco tourist circuit is one uh, aspect which can be promoted, sir. Second is uh, promotion of spiritual circuit. Uh, for example, the Kadapa gets its name from the word Gadapa. Uh, which many people feel it has the starting point to go to the famous Lord, Lord Balaji of Tirupati, sir. So that uh, religious circuit can also be promoted. And uh, there are other geological formations of very significant importance, sir. So scientific tourism in, on a geological scale, all, scale can also Any be promoted. Example? Sir, like Kadapa system of rocks is uh, famous uh, all over India. So Kadapa system of rocks belongs to this Kadapa basin. You were first find out there. So there is a geological heritage site close to Kadapa, but it, it uh, falls in uh, Chitur district, sir, okay. but it is close to Kadapa. So these things can be promoted, sir. Hmm. You have done your 10th from Narayana Concept School. These days, you know, there are many, there is criticism against the curriculum followed in Andhra Pradesh, where no music, no sports, nothing is encouraged. Do you have any ideas how to get away with uh, this kind of system? Sir, uh, can you repeat the question? Is it about the government schools or private? No, Narayana concept, concept school, right? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, the, uh, the curriculum in Narayana concept school or the other uh, similar private organizations is definitely not up to the standards which uh, our national education policy speaks about, sir. So, I, I vividly remember that I barely had any extracurricular activities while I was in my schooling. I was, I was actually not aware of any of these things uh, like a proper extracurricular activities will also be provided in school because we were made in such a notion that uh, school itself means is a competitive thing. You have to always keep uh, studying, you have to perform very well. So these uh, private institutions, especially my school which I, which I studied in, was also of that kind. Now I, what shall we do to reduce the following among the parents and students towards this kind of schools? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, few steps like government also came down heavily on this kind of schools sir, and it closed recently closed some of the schools of uh, Narayana and other private organizations because they were not following various laws established by no, the state see, and central government. Okay, okay. Second is we also have to bring a attitudinal change among the parents also sir, and the society at large because it is it should be a bottom up approach when parents themselves get sensitized or made aware of uh, what negatives they are uh, their children are getting because of this type of education, they definitely, I feel, will not go to these uh, kind of education systems. 
So you see down the lane. In how many years do you think is possible? Sir, I can't exactly put a figure on it, sir, because it is a process which will uh, depend a lot on how people are accepting the idea. But I feel that the various sections of society are moving in that particular idea, sir. Yeah. Because at least uh, as the more and more number of people from these institutions getting into the uh, elite institutions like, like uh, IITs. IITs or NITs, the people who are entering are uh, educating their parents and the next generations that there are lot of flaws in this present education system in Sanjay See, coming to IITs, don't you think the very purpose of establishing IITs is defeated when most of the students, most of the candidates coming out of the college are not pursuing their core field? Don't you think the very purpose is defeated? Uh, sir, my personal opinion in this aspect, uh, I, I beg to vary slightly, sir. Because when the institutions were established at the start, uh, I definitely agree that it was to provide uh, good engineers. Uh, for the future India, uh, but over a period of time, the institutions also evolved themselves. Sir. So at present, I feel IITs as an institution provide a good platform for any aspiring engineer uh, who wants to excel in, in their field. But because of the uh, poor education system, especially in the 11th and 12th class, many people are choosing IITs not because of their passion, sir. It was more of a race uh, they were put into by their parents or society, they are entering into IITs, but once they enter into IITs, they are getting a lot of awareness about various other aspects and they are moving onward, moving but from is there. But it right? is it right? They are spending so much money on the engineering graduates and they are going out doing something else. Sir, from a government point of view, it is not uh, always, it is not exactly correct because… From your point of view. Uh, but I feel it is not completely wrong as such because any person who reached to that stage, if you want to truly pursue some other profession and contribute in his own way to the country or economy, I think he can, he should be allowed to do so, sir. Okay, my last one. You have been Osaka, right? Yes, sir. Famous for nightlife? Yes, sir. So, shall we encourage nightlife in India too, to increase tourism? Yes, sir. To increase tourism, enc encouraging nightlife is not a bad thing as such. But uh, one caution which I think uh, Indian government should take is, Night, encouraging nightlife uh, comes with various other challenges. It might uh, lead to uh, increase in other illegal activities like usage of drugs uh, or other banned substances. So when if these things are taken care, then encouraging nightlife is definitely a beautiful opportunity to explore tourism sectors. Okay. So you are part of NSS in IIT Delhi, right? Yes. When you are in NSS Delhi. So what kind of activities that you perform there? Uh, sir, as a part of NSS, I. Uh, I was a part of different activities, sir. Some of the activities include uh, blood donation camps, uh, working in a zoological center of uh, Delhi, Delhi Zoo, uh, working with underprivileged students, going to orphanages and teaching uh, to, the, to these kids in our free time. So these are some of the activities which we, I was part of, sir. So what do you think this NSS should be starting from the school level or the college level? Sir, NSS as a philosophy, like serving the society as a philosophy, I think should be inculcated as early as possible in every individual, sir. Uh, but coming to the exact scheme, uh, it depends upon the level of the student, maturity of the student. But serving as a philosophy, as an attitude, should be a part as soon as possible into a children's life, sir. So what experience that you gained from your NSS service from IIT Delhi? Other than this rural development, what you talked yes, about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, NSS uh, made me more social, sir. Uh, if I can say so. Uh, my actual hobby is also interacting with people, sir. Right from my childhood, I am very enthusiastic to, enthusiastic to interact with different kinds of people from different cultures. And so NSS gave me an opportunity to further explore my hobby. So when I was uh, studying in my college, which is completely different from uh, the culture which I was brought up, so I got exposed to various kinds of people, various problems they are facing. I became more empathetic uh, and compassionate to different sections of society. Because from the outside, I may feel that uh, they have a okay, lot of problems, but even I have problems. But when I started uh, to understand their problems from their point of view, then I have realized that every individual has his own story. So it made me to be more uh, compassionate and uh, uh, more compassionate and empathetic to weaker sections <coughs> of the society. Sir. So how do you differentiate the hobby interacting with people and reading books? Of course, you don't have the hobby of reading books here. So when you compare these two hobbies, so what would be the better one you feel? Sir, both hobbies have their merits and demerits. 
uh, reading books is also very noble hobby sir but for me personally i was not very fond of uh, sitting in one place and reading books i was more fond of interacting with different kinds of people because it was giving me the practical knowledge of uh, who they are uh, how their lifestyle is where they, where they are coming from i usually try to interact more with elder people sir so i usually try to uh, ask them about their childhood how india was there during that time how, how their lifestyle was because uh, in the present rapidly changing world so with the given change in technology so there is a lot happening in the world so there is a lot happening in a span of very short time so interacting with people gave me the opportunity to have a proper knowledge of how the society is evolving uh, in different parts of the country sir Uh, Ramana Kamper, very good. So you have appeared combined in different services sector also. Yes, sir. Very good. So there are three services, as you know, Air Force, Navy, Army. Yes. Uh, in Army, there is a person, Sam Maniksha. Have you heard about him? Sorry, sir, I haven't heard okay. of it. So he was the first field marshal of India. Okay. First field marshal. Uh, General K M Kariyappa. Have you heard about that? Uh, sir, Since you appeared in Defence Service, service Excel, no, I am asking this. Sir, can you repeat the final question? Again? General K M Kariyappa. Uh, K M Kariyappa. Kariyappa. Sir, I have heard his name, what but I am able to. He was the first general of India. Okay, sir. First general. So you know, um, you have worked in uh, this uh, Daikin Industries Syndicate. Okay. So, can you explain uh, energy conservation point of view, that star rated designs of ACs, because you are involved with the development of ACs? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I was not exactly working in that particular field which was, but sir, I have a idea, a little bit idea of that. Yeah. So, star rating uh, basically defines uh, different air conditioners based upon the energy which it is consuming for a given output. So when we say a two star AC and a five star AC, so five star AC obviously consumes for less given energy. input. Uh, for a given in, in for for a uh, given targeted output, okay. it consumes less energy. So okay. five star AC. Okay. So and uh, with the uh, latest inverter technology, these uh, ACs are performing even better because inverter in these air conditioners helps in further. Uh, reducing the energy that is consumed by the compressor. So, of course, inverter uh, ACs are very good in efficiency, yes, but in uh, maintenance point of view, which you prefer, inverter AC or Radner AC? Uh, sir, in any given mechanical equipment, as the number of parts increases, its maintenance cost and uh, headaches will also increase. Sir. So, inverter AC also has this additional component of inverter. So, there, there are some challenges of uh, frequent maintenance. For example, only one hour, two hours usage for a particular residence. In that case, which you prefer? Sir, if the usage is very less, very then less. I feel non-inverter AC is also equally energy, energetically efficient because over a longer time scale, the maintenance cost will be low if it is a non-inverter AC. But if it is an inverter AC, uh, it is usually preferred for longer working hours or tough conditions like uh, in very hot areas like in southern part of India, where the temperature goes very high, they are preferred. Open-ended question. Since you are interested in anthropology, I just make a proposal. Let me know how you will react to that. Sure. Sir. I say that Ramayana was a war between the Aryans and the Dravidians. How do you react? Sir. Uh, I would, I beg to dis disagree in this particular aspect, sir. First point, there are no uh, empirical proofs as of now that uh, there are uh, like there is a there is no such clear distinction between Aryans and Dravidians as such. At least according to the existing uh, evidences, uh, this distinction is not uh, agreed in the academic circles of anthropology, sir. So I beg to uh, disagree with this uh, particular thing that it is a war between two different races or two different sets of people. Uh, have you followed the Rakhi Gadi excavations? Yes, sir. What have you learnt out of that? Uh, sir, uh, 
I have followed it. I am unable to uh, exactly pinpoint, pin, like remember each and every point of Rakhi Gadi excavation. But on a broader scale, Rakhi Gadi excavation uh, became famous because uh, there were mitochondrial DNA tests which were conducted, and also uh, they were trying DNA tests were conducted on burials which uh, fossils which they uh, excavated for a particular gene to know about this uh, so called RNA invasion theory debate. So in that it was uh, proved that there is no uh, clear evidences that any particular race migrated uh, from the central Asian part to this Harappan site and so called Aryans as such was a complete hoax. So this uh, evidences which were found from Rakhi Gari uh, questioned this earlier uh, notion of Aryan invasion theory sir. and it did not provide any proper uh, support to that theory. So, you are aware that some skeletons were discovered there? Yes, sir. And uh, the skeletons that they discovered mm -hmm. belong to which kind of people? Which kind of? People. Uh, Who were the people? Whose skeletons were those? Sir, I am unable to exactly recollect. There, were, there, it, there was a skeleton of a woman. Uh, which was found no, in Rakhi Gari and no, on which the no, tests were happened. Racially. Uh, sorry, sir, I, am, I don't remember that point. Fine, that is good enough. One point uh, about the IITs. What percentage of the IIT graduates are going abroad? Sir, I do not know the official statistics as such, uh, but with whatever experience or knowledge I have, I think it will be anywhere between 15 to 30 percent, sir. Going abroad. Going abroad. So and it has I, been increasing in the recent years. It has been increasing. Yes, sir. So, how many IITs are there in the country? Sir, uh, currently I do not know the exact figure because there have been a lot of new IITs that uh, came up post my graduation as well. So, currently I am unaware of sir, but when I entered it was only 14. 1 4. 1 4 sir. Okay. What was the total intake of the students in all the IITs put together? Uh, sir, when I entered my graduation it was uh, around 6 to 7000 people only sir. 7000 people. In among the 14 colleges combined. So, let us say you would figure out about say 30 percent of them going abroad. So, that would be close to? Uh, sir, anyway like 2000, 2200 2000 people will be going students. abroad. So, IITs are actually giving handles for our Indian very bright students to leave the country. And actually government is facilitating the rain drain. Is that a correct proposition to make? Uh, sir, I do not uh, feel that IITs are giving that opportunity of uh, leaving the country. They are just giving them a platform to get exposed to various different uh, uh, technologies or various different uh, developments which are happening in the world. So, if I feel that if enough facilities or enough opportunities are provided with in India under the various uh, government schemes like Startup India uh, and other such schemes, definitely they will uh, al also in, they will always be interested in staying back in the country or coming back if, if at all if they have left the country. Okay. Now, do you have any figures of how many people returning to India after spending a few years outside? Uh, sorry, sir, I do not uh, have any such But figures. what is your about. Uh, sir, I feel as of now it is very less in number who are returning back. I, I do not think it will be any way more than 15 percent out of the any given 100 people, not more than 15 percent people are coming back uh, to India for various reasons. Sir. And if they do also, they may be coming toward the fag end of their lives. Yes, sir. So, yes. they will not be of great So, they will be more of a uh, NRIs uh, or the diaspora of India, sir. Yeah. Now, how good it is for our country to continue to encourage these IITs? Uh, sir, from government of government point of view, definitely it does not augur well to spend uh, heavily on IITs at the cost of other uh, very well maintained state universities or other colleges. Because I also feel that engineering itself is not the entire uh, solution or entire uh, um, academic field which is available. There is a gross neglect of other disciplines. For example, in IITs, uh, other social sciences or humanities subjects were uh, started very recently. 
uh, as far as I can remember, it was only in 2005 or 2006, uh, this department started in my particular university. So, heavy spending on IITs and NITs and our other national uh, institutes of importance uh, does gross under justice to other universities and social arts group and other social sciences um, where there are equally important opportunities uh, to be explored with. Also, there is high underfunding in the pure science, applied uh, science uh, colleges, sir. for example. Applied or pure sciences? Pure sciences, sir, pure not sciences, applied. Sir. Not applied. Uh, for example, there are very few. Physics and chemistry. Yes, IASC Bangalore and other such institutes, there are very few in numbers. Sir. And where I think India should focus more on. It is not just about IITs or NITs. Perfect. Suppose if you are a policy maker, what steps will you take? Um, first thing, I, I would definitely try to allocate more funds to pure sciences and other uh, social sciences uh, disciplines. Sir. And I will also try to ensure uh, to generate awareness both for the parents as well as the uh, children who are going or studying in different schools or colleges, 11th and 12th class, about the importance of other fields also. It's not just about uh, engineering, engineering, engineering. So there are other fields like there are uh, huge disciplines um, like anthropology, sociology and other social social sciences where there are a lot of opportunities coming up, especially in, even if you if you consider the developed world, there are a lot of employment opportunities for social scientists. So I feel India also has a lot of potential to create jobs in that particular uh, sector. Which it is not currently exploring. Yes, sir, I feel so. Mm. I think that's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We spent half an hour. 35 minutes actually. <coughs> the formal part of interview is over. Okay. Sir. Okay. I don't want to even use the word interview. It's a personality assessment only at the best.